to get out safely and quickly. And if we're running around bumping into each other, it is going to take longer for everybody to get outside, right? And then also, if you're running around bumping into each other, somebody could get hurt. Or if your teachers have extra directions for you, you may not hear them if you're running around acting crazy, right? So do you stand up and quietly push in your chairs and quietly line up to go outside? Yeah. I hope so. I hope that's what you're doing. That's what you should be doing. What else did the grandmas do up here? Right here, buddy. What else did the grandmas do? and the other one stayed in and was hiding and also saved a picture. So a lot of things there, right? So, do we have lots of nice stuff in our houses? Yeah. Stuff that we like, right? But can we get new stuff? Yeah. Yes. Can we get new people? Yeah. No, we can't get new people. So we need to get ourselves and any other people outside of the house where it's safe. And then if we have stuff in the house, the quicker we get outside and call 911, hopefully the less stuff gets damaged by the fire and the less stuff we have to replace. But we can't replace people, so we have to get the people out, okay? And we can get new pictures, we can, we can get new toys and clothes, but even if we have pets in the house, we can tell the firefighters when they get to our house that we have pets in the house, and they will do everything they can to help your pets. But it's important that you guys don't try to help your pets because you don't wear all the special clothes that our friends do. Deal? Yeah. Okay. What else did the grandmas do? There's a couple more things we got to talk about right here. Oh, they did call the wrong number. Do you guys know the right number to call? Yeah. 911. So one nine and two ones. 911. And that number, if we call that number, we might get firefighters, right? We might get police officers we might get an ambulance. And a lot of times, especially if you call because there's a fire in your house, you're probably gonna get all three, okay? So should we call if we wanna order a pizza? No. Should we call if our brother punches us really hard in the arm and it hurts really bad? No. No. Should we call if we're home alone and we're scared? No. Could we call 911 for that? Yeah, we could. And if somebody gets hurt really bad, could we call, like, really bad? Not like someone punched you in the arm. Like, if someone breaks a leg and you're home alone with that person, could you call 911 for that? Mm-hmm. You could. Okay, those are all good reasons to call 911. Do you guys all know your address? Because did you know that that's what they're going to ask? That's the first thing they're going to ask if you call? So if you don't know your address, you should start learning it. Okay? What else did the firefighters do? Our firefighters, the grandmas do. Uh, right there, buddy. What else did the grandmas do? You know? That's okay, buddy. Um, someone I haven't called on. Right here. They left the cat during the fire. That's probably okay. Remember I said that if we have pets in the house, we can let the firefighters know where they are? The only exception is if you can call for your pets on your way out the door and they follow you. Or like if you're sitting on the couch and your cat is in your lap and you can just pick up the cat or whatever pet and walk out the door with them, then I'd be okay with that. But what I'm not okay with is you guys looking for your pets. If you have to look for your pets, then we, we need to get outside and just let the firefighters know. Um, usually, if you tell the firefighters where your pet likes to go to hide when they get scared, or where they like to sleep, that's where you would want to tell the firefighters to check. But, oh, I forgot too. So when you, somebody said they called the wrong number, they did call the wrong number, but there's something else that they should have done when they called. Let's see if you know, right here, buddy, in the red shirt. Tell their address. Well, they would have to tell their address, but there's something else that they did. They called from the wrong place, right back there in the back. Um, um, they should let their cat, but they to take it. They, right, they should have left the cat, but they decided to take it. We're talking about where they called 911 from. Did they call from inside the house where the fire was burning? Yeah. Yes. So if there's a fire in our house, do we want to stand right next to the hot fire and call 911? No. No. We want to get outside. Remember, that's the thing that I said you guys have to do. The only thing you need to do when there's a fire is get yourself outside. 
And once you're outside, then you can call 911. You can call from your meeting place, or you can call if you don't have, like if you know where your cell phone is, or you know someone that has a cell phone, it's right next to them, and it's easy to find when the, when the smoke alarms go off, then you can take that outside with you. But if not, then you guys need to, or whoever needs to go to a neighbor's house and borrow the phone. Because even though we can use the cell phone from outside, we don't want to run around looking for it. Because the longer it takes for us to get outside, the bigger the fire is going to get. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me think of what else. If there's anything else. So the grandma was hiding, and we don't want to hide if there's a fire, right? Okay, if there's a fire in our house or anywhere else we get outside, we can't hide from fire. And if we can't get outside for some reason, we'll talk about that in just a second, but if we can't get outside, hiding isn't gonna help us. We don't wanna hide from the firefighters if they need to come in and help us, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, all right, so let's talk about something else. So then the last thing is that the grandmas did was that this was just sitting on the table and what did the one grandma say? What did, what did she think it was? She thought it was a coaster. Do you guys know what a coaster is? Yeah. A coaster is something that you can put your cup on so that it doesn't drift down and like ruin your table. So the grandma said, here, do you like my new coaster? Do you guys know what this is? Is this a coaster? No. Do you know what it is? Can someone tell me what it is? It's a smoke alarm, that's right. So a smoke alarm sits on our ceiling and it smells for smoke. That's its only job. That's all that it does. And when it smells for smoke, it beeps really loud and it goes beep, 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 beep. And it will do that over and over and over to tell us to go where? Outside. Right, okay. So grandma didn't have this up on her ceiling. And if we don't have these up on our ceiling, they cannot help us and tell us to get out if there's a fire especially when we're sleeping at night. So somebody, can somebody tell, or actually, raise your hand if you sleep with your bedroom door closed. Oh, a lot of you, that's awesome. Okay, you can put your hands down. So if you sleep with your bedroom door closed, okay, you're gonna go to the door if you hear the smoke alarm going off, and you're gonna feel the door at the back of your hand. So everybody touch this part of your hand, because that's the part of the door we're gonna we're gonna, or part of our hand we're gonna feel the door with. And it'll look kind of like this. Okay, we're just gonna feel the door with our hand. And if it feels cool, then we can open the door. But we're not gonna open it and go running into the hall. We're gonna open it carefully and peek into the hallway. And then if it looks safe, then that's the way we should go. If it doesn't look safe, we're gonna step back in the room and close the door. If we feel the door and it feels warm, that means there's fire on the other side of it and we should not open it. So then we leave the door closed, okay? If you sleep with your bedroom door open, I want you to just stop in the doorway and peek and look both ways and just kind of check for just a second, not for a very long time, and just check and see if it would be safe to go that way. And if it looks safe to go that way, then that is the way you should go because it's always best to go through a door. Now, raise your hand if you sleep upstairs at home. So about, about half of you maybe. Okay, you can put your hands down. So anyone who did not just raise their hand, if you've checked the door, and you can't go that way, um, or you've looked into the hallway and you can't go that way, you're gonna close the door, and then what's the other way that you can get out of your room if you can't go through the door? You could go out the window. So anyone who did not just raise their hand to say that they sleep upstairs could go out your window and go to your family meeting place. And I don't think I explained that, but a family meeting place is the one place that everybody should know that they can go. And so you'll meet there and you will, um, sorry, I got distracted. So you'll meet there, and then that way, it doesn't matter, like if you go out your bedroom window and your mom and dad go out the front door or their bedroom window, everybody will know that they're gonna meet there. So you don't have to run around the house looking for other people in your family. Because you know that no matter how you leave your house, you're gonna meet at that place. And a meeting place should be in the front of your house, kind of close to your house, not like right up next to your house, but maybe like a tree in the front yard or a fence. Um, a mailbox, if it sits right in front of your house, is a good place, and it should be on the same side of the street as your house, and easy to get to, okay? Because then that way, if it's on the same side of the street, you'll see the fire trucks pull up, and you can talk to the firefighters when they get there, and then um, they can ask you if everybody's out, or if you have pets in the house, and they'll ask you all those questions. But if you're down the corner and around the block, 
they won't know who they need to talk to, right? Okay, so we gotta, we gotta have that meeting place. All right, so now we have to talk about, if we can't go out of our bedroom window because we sleep upstairs at home, which a few of you do, you can't go out your window because it's too high, right? Does anybody know what you can do to let the firefighters know that you're up there? Because you're not going out the window. There's, I don't want any of you to jump out the window. There's one exception to that, and we will talk about that in a second. Oh, there's so many hands up. I hope you know the answer. Right here. Yes, good job. So she said they can throw out your stuff so that they'll see that stuff, and then they'll look up, and they'll see you up in your window. That's exactly what we need you to do. So if you check your door or you open it and it looks like that's not even safe, or if you if you open your door and you're like, oh, it looks safe to go, and then you start going out the door and then you realize that that's not, you're not gonna be able to get out that way, you can turn around and go back to your room. You can go out the window or if it's up high, then you leave that door closed and you block the bottom of it, okay? the bottom of the door, because there's always a gap at the bottom of the door, right? So put something down there, like clothes or a blanket or pillows or something, to block it to make sure the smoke doesn't come under. And then you'll open the window and push out your screen and throw a bunch of things down onto the ground to make a big pile of stuff for our friends to see. There is not enough stuff in your rooms for you to throw out so that you could jump on it. That would not work, okay? The only reason we're throwing out the stuff is so that our firefighter friends will see it and then they'll know where they should put their ladder and then they'll come and get you out of your room. Now, if you're waiting for the firefighters after you've thrown that stuff out, if the smoke does start to come into your room, you're gonna need to sit down by the window because, and that's why we have you throw the stuff because you can stand there and you can wave your arms and yell and scream, but if the smoke starts coming into your room, you're gonna need to get down low because when the smoke comes in, it goes up high first. Okay, so you wanna get down low underneath the smoke and then if you're sitting down by the window, they won't see you, right? Okay, so then that way they'll still see that pile of stuff, they'll still know that there's a kid up there and they will, they will come and get you out. So, we don't wanna hide, we wanna stay right by the window. If you don't have a window in your bedroom, then your door is the way that the firefighters are gonna come and help you, isn't it? So then I would want you to stay next to the door, not right in front of it where you would get hit by the door, just right next to the door, kind of close to it, so that when they come in, they can they can find you right away. Deal? Deal. Okay, and I will tell you that if you have working smoke alarms in your house and they have fresh batteries in them, you shouldn't have any problems getting out of your house because it doesn't. a fire does not have to be big for the smoke alarms to be really loud to tell us to get out. So that's why we don't take time to find our stuff. That's why we just get out of the house as quickly as we can, okay? Also, all fires start small. So, it's never gonna be like in the movies, you know, where you are watching a movie and the fire starts really small, but then all of a sudden, boom, two seconds later, the whole house is on fire. That's not how it works in real life. <clears throat> and even sometimes in movies, fires start really big, and that's not how it works in real life either. Fires always start small, always. That's just how they work, okay? So they have to find things to burn to get big and they sure can burn down a whole house or a whole building, but it doesn't happen really super fast. Does that make sense? And the last thing I wanna say before we go to questions is that you will never have a time where you will be surrounded by fire. We see that in movies sometimes too, don't we? So, if you're standing on flooring that can burn, then all the flooring can burn. It's not gonna stop where you are and go around you, right? But that's just movie stuff, okay? And that's just special effects that they do to make it look cool. That wouldn't happen in real life. And then that actually reminds me of one more thing. You're not gonna be in, caught in your house where you have a fire inside your house and in your bedroom and outside your bedroom door and outside of your bedroom window all at the same time. So somebody almost always asks me that almost every time I go to a school. And you should know that that would be, that would be a worst case scenario. That would be a really bad day. But, but if you're just hearing your smoke alarms go off, the fire's not gonna be that big yet. It's not. So yeah, you might have fire right outside your door but it's not gonna be all inside your bedroom and outside your door and outside your house all at the same time, okay? Um, yeah, 
I think that's all. So we'll go to questions, and I think what we'll do is we'll do one question from each class. So I, since I don't know where classroom boundaries are, I'll let you teachers decide. And please remember when we go into this, I would love to hear all your wonderful stories because I'm sure they're amazing and great, but we don't have time to hear all your stories. So if you have a question, I definitely want to ask. I want to answer it for you. Um, if we don't get to your question and you're like, I just, am, I need to ask this question, please write me a letter and write your question down and send it to me. And I will send a letter back to your school, to your teacher, answering any questions that I get. Does that sound good? Yeah. You just have to let me know what class you're in and who your teacher is and your name so that I can send it back to you. Deal? Yeah. All right.